Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the final episode for 2023 of Spearhead Sundays. Uh, I hope I didn't freak you out by saying that. This is going to be a short one because I am recording this on New Year's uh, Eve. Uh, what time is it now? It is currently 5.52 p.m. I have spent the entire day and actually really a lot of the week uh, planning my year, thinking about my goals, setting resolutions. And if you think that all of that stuff is hippie, hoo-ha, woo-woo bullshit, don't listen to this episode because we're, we're bringing back a classic tradition of the Spearhead Sundays podcast that was abandoned, much to the disappointment of myself and you guys. If you are an OG listener of Spearhead Sundays, you will know that I, I don't even know when I started it. I think I, since the start of the podcast, I have been doing New Year's resolutions every single year since I think maybe 2013 or 14. Uh, and what I've been doing, I've been making a tradition on the podcast. At the end of the year, I read my goals that I set at the start of the year, see how many of them I hit, and then I also read the goals that I'm setting for the following year. So I have here in my hands the goals for 2024, and I'm just now fucking realizing that I forgot to grab the other notebook. I'll be back in one second. One sec. Fuck. All right, I'm back. Uh, sorry, I filled up uh, five notebooks uh, from writing every single morning. Uh, one, two, three, four. They're all the same notebook and... Uh, I really should date them at the start because I just had to flick through all of them. Anyway, so I have been doing this every single year for as long as I can remember, and I'm pretty sure I've also been doing it publicly on the podcast. I had a lot of people ask me to bring it back because I stopped doing it. Uh, and the reason I stopped doing it was because it became too painful to set goals that uh, a healthy person definitely could have achieved or a healthy version of me could have achieved and then to just fail and it just really honestly just not be my fault. You know, like I couldn't handle it. And also I stopped doing it because of the, the lockdowns as well. I kept, uh, you know, celebrating lockdown finishing by writing a bunch of goals because, you know, if you were in Melbourne, it was uh, lockdowns were going to end forever every month. You know, it was going to be just for a month for fucking two years. And uh, eventually it just became far too painful for me to look at goals and intentions that I had set for an entire year uh, and to have them consistently dashed again and again and again. I stopped doing them uh, as a means of survival because I couldn't handle the, the disappointment. And uh, my, my entire mode went from what am I going to be doing in the next five years and how do I break that down into what am I doing this year and then how do I break that down into what am I doing this month, this week, today, so on and so forth. Uh, it, it instead went from, uh, oh, well, it's not going to work uh, and I'm so fucking sick that all I can do is survive and wait. And I don't think that was particularly the wrong thing to do, but, man, it was difficult. Now I'm finally healthy uh, I'm feeling really good. I'm no longer in that place anymore. Um, it's looking like there won't be any more global pandemics, but potentially another world war, which I am turning 30 now. So I'm aging out of the draft. So fuck you guys. If you're under 25, you guys will go in first. Me, I'll kick back. I might entertain the troops if I feel like it. Uh, so now uh, what I want to do is, uh, is I did actually set some little baby goals this year uh, that were just pre-surgery goals. So I had one surgery and I set a couple of goals and then I, and then after, or, or and then I also set some post recovery goals. So this is a little bit more realistic of me. Uh, this is from January to June. I tried to do these things, uh, regain control of my life. This is going to be exceedingly honest, this episode. Uh, by the way, I highly encourage you to be thinking about your own intentions and your own goals the whole time I'm doing this and after this podcast and beyond. Uh, regain control of my life. I, I ticked that one. I, I, I did do that stuff. I, I took back control and I started doing what I could, even though I was 
very sick. Swim regularly. I did do that. Uh, I have not done that since surgery, but I did do that. Uh, build a body to be proud of. I got, I got there. Yeah, I was happy with it. I was maybe not proud of it, but it was like I was no longer severely underweight. Smash that. I wanted to create, write, and perform. I didn't set any concrete goals there because I didn't know how well I would be, whatever. I ended up uh, smashing the comedy festival. Uh, that And then that made me really, really ill <laughs> and I had to stop, but I did it, so I ticked it. Uh, I wanted to uh, protect my energy and my passion from those in your life who would sap it. Yes, that's a big one that I did. I, uh, I kind of uh, moved away from a lot of people that were taking a lot uh, of, of energy uh, from me and also stopped doing a lot of things that uh, were, were taking my energy away uh, from me. And this is in my personal life. This is not anything, any public people that I've worked with. Um, this is uh, much more personal than that. Uh, and, uh, it's, and, and also just people that I, you know, you don't really know, you know, you bump into someone, you get along with them and then you, you find out that they're a taker. It's like, why are you allowing that in, into your life? You want someone that can share with you, uh, the same things that you share with them. Uh, and it's a, it's a real bad tendency that, that I, uh, have, and I'm still trying to get out of is just, uh, helping others at the expense of myself. Because I love helping people and, lo and I love seeing other people succeed. But I really uh, gave away everything, I think, you know. I, I, I think that was because, you know, again, because of like COVID and stuff, like my surgery was going to be next month for two years, you know. Like we couldn't do these surgeries. If uh, lockdowns and shit didn't happen or if I even lived in Tasmania and I found a surgeon there, I would have been finished with the whole surgical process by the end of like 21 or maybe even halfway through 21 but uh, it only just ended uh, because it got delayed so much and that made me so sick. And so I was in this space where I was like, oh, well, I can't, so I will help you. Um, and uh, that's cool and that's a really nice thing to do for someone else, but it's not a very kind thing to do uh, to you. Um, and so I am uh, not getting rid of everyone in my life. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to uh, monitor what I do give away. And that's not to say like, I'm only going to give if, if, if I'm going to get something back. It is to say like, I don't care if I get anything back and it, you should never be giving uh, like as an investment because that's not giving, that's manipulating. Uh, I am being like, okay, when that instinct to help someone else comes up, I think to myself, what will this cost me? And do I have time to do this? And is this going to get in the way of the thing that, you know, I, you know, say all the time is the most important thing in the world to me. Uh, and uh, if it will get in the way, because of course, sometimes it does, I'll go, well, is it worth it? And if the answer is yes, then I'll do it. If the answer is no, then I won't. And just those little questions before I dive in, you know, it's the, it's the same thing of like when an airplane's going down and the, and the, oxygen mask drop in, you put it on yourself first and then you help somebody else. That's true uh, of all things. Um, it's like you, because I feel like, especially with sensitive, I'm such a sensitive person. And I'm so sensitive to the needs of others and I anticipate the needs of other people. I see someone uh, who needs something and they may not even know that they need it. A little bit of help, a little bit of advice, a, a, a 50 minute phone call of like, hey, you're doing this. Here's how you do it properly, you know. Those things are great and are very, very kind. But fuck, man, I was doing that all day, you know. Like I would just scroll. I would see someone doing something and I would call them up and I would go, hey, I want to help you with this, blah, blah, blah. For, for fucking everybody in my life. Um, and I'm not stopping doing that. I'm just turning it back and prioritizing myself and uh, helping those who, you know, really deserve it and putting that energy where uh, it's uh, most beneficial and least harmful to me because, you know, you can help other people to, to your own death. <laughs> uh, it's not good for you. Uh, and it's, it's not even really helpful or necessary, you know? Um, I wanted to maintain my home and my, my workspace. I did that. Uh, build a healthy routine centered on creativity and health. I also did that. 
And that, that routine when I was at my sickest for the last, you know, eight months or so was just wake up in the morning, write three pages in my notebook and then go back to bed. That was all I could do. Um, I wanted to go to the, go to the UK. I did not do that. I couldn't afford it. Uh, that's okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe this year. Uh, focus on and cherish the present. Smash that. I've really, really been uh, being here. Uh, and uh, I've written the last goal, the most important one. Prioritize yourself above all else. Uh, and I did that and I have been doing that. And it is a choice that I make every single day because every day I see someone who needs help or I see I've had that urge to fall back into old habits. And I have to remind myself that deciding not to spend eight hours of today helping everybody else and not going to the gym or making a video or filming something or feeding yourself is not selfish. It is uh, normal and healthy. And maybe you can help one of those people because there will always be somebody who needs help. Um, and then uh, this goal that I actually have not looked at since I wrote it, uh, this is my post surgery. So from June to December, my goal and the only goal that I wrote was to prioritize recovery above everything else. And I'm going to give that right now live on the podcast, a big fat tick. Uh, that's something that I have done really well. Uh, and something that I have absolutely made sure has happened. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that I, I feel like I am pretty much 100% recovered. I reckon I'm like maybe 90% 90, 95% of the way there. I still have some numbness on my bottom lip or the bottom right half from my, from the bottom right half, from the right half of my bottom lip down to my chin. It feels all tingly and weird and numb when I touch it. Sometimes it feels cold. Sometimes it feels like it's vibrating. Other times it hurts. I think the nerve is just trying to figure out where it is and what it's doing. Um, and then uh, I can't eat a few things, but I get my braces off in April. So that'll be fully, fully, fully recovered, uh, which is really cool. So I, I'm very happy giving that one a tick. Um, and that's, that's something that I, I feel like I took a little bit too long to figure out is setting like, because uh, if, you know, it's hard to explain and it's hard to understand if you've never been chronically sick, like sick for a really long time, uh, disabled. Uh, it's really difficult to explain um, how, uh, hurtful it can be to set a goal that a just a normal person could do and then just to have you not be able to do it and it's just it's just not your fault you know it'd be like if a fucking paraplegic set their sights on walking up the stairs and they don't even have a chance at it and then they beat themselves up over it and it's like that's a ridiculous goal to set maybe start with you know if there's a chance at recovery moving one of your toes you know, and that can be your win rather than beating yourself up and going, oh, I can't run a marathon. I fucking, I've failed, you know? And I think that's that because the goal setting has like a real toxic thing of uh, nature of it, the goal setting and the, the new year's resolutions. And it, it has, does have a toxic side of it of like, shut the fuck up and get to work. But man, that this self care shit, it's so important. It's, it's so important. And, and, you know, you should be setting like scary, impossible goals, but they shouldn't be so scary and so impossible that they actually become demotivating. Like I'm not going to be like next year, I'm going to make $10 million. Cause it's like, how do I even fucking start that? You know, how do I even get close to that? If I made $500,000, that would change my life, but that would feel like a failure in comparison to the incredible, unrealistic uh, goal that I set. So it's like, this goal setting stuff, you've got to have a, a nice mix of delusional confidence and, uh, and uh, uh, editing uh, realistic um, perspective of like you set your crazy goal and then just edit it a little bit and then fucking go hard. And it shouldn't be something that's easy to achieve. It shouldn't be something that you're 100% going to get, but it should be something that like, you know, if you get 70% of the way there, even 60% of the way there, you could change your life. You know, like if I, if I were a bodybuilder, I'm like, man, I want to weigh 115 kilos and then I only get to hundred. Fuck that. would change my life because I've just put on like 20, you know? Um, anyway, so with that said, 
we're going to have a look at my uh, goals. And one thing that I'm doing this year is I actually uh, bought, uh, a, I've been looking at planners, daily planners. I bought a, a, a Hobonichi Techo. It's a Japanese planner. It's the best one in the world, according to many people uh, who do the planning thing. And it's just one page a day. Uh, and it has like a little timetable on the left and then uh, of the page. And then the right hand side is just for writing whatever you want. Uh, and I am going to attempt to use this religiously because a huge, massive goal of mine this year is to get the fuck off the phone. I hate the phone. It's poison. It's toxic. It never makes me feel good. It just stresses me out. It's I hate messaging. I like calling. I like talking to people on the phone, but I fucking hate the endless death scroll. And I think I hate that so much now because it was such a symptom of my illness. It, I literally used it as a tool to keep me awake. I was so fatigued that whenever I felt myself start to drift, I would reach into my phone, I would scroll TikTok or Instagram, and the, the light of the phone and the input would just jolt my brain to be half awake. Um, you know, and, that's, and that was like a huge coping mechanism for me. And now I'm just like sickened by the phone. I hate it. If I want to watch videos, I'll put it on my laptop or the TV. I don't want to use my phone ever. And whenever I have used planning apps, calendar apps, things like that, they're so cool. And I love the, the videos that people make about them and I love seeing them work. But whenever I use them and I set them up and I fucking pay a subscription and I do all this bullshit, the minute I pick up my phone and I open up that app, I'm getting notifications. Even when I'm not getting notifications, even when I turn them off, I fucking have a look at what I need to do today. Now I'm on my phone. Now I'm on Instagram. Now I'm on Twitter. Now I'm looking at beheadings. I fucking hate it. It's the worst. So I'm going to try my absolute very best to keep the phone out of my fucking hand. And part of that is going to be buying a watch. Part of that is going to be having this uh, daily planner that has my schedule in it, that has every event that I need to do. And another part of that is going to be just leaving the phone in a different room. Like I even fucking hate having it next to me because you feel, I don't know about you, but you just feel that call of like whenever it's within arm's reach, whenever I see the light reflect of it, I've, I have this fucking lizard brain thing of like, have a, have a scroll, have a look, check if anyone's commented, check if some anyone's like, it's fucking, it's poison. It's not how I want to live my life. I lost someone uh, really, really, really important to me this year. Uh, and, and they went early in, and, and it just made me realize how fucking lucky I am to be alive and to be here right now and to be able to look at the fucking trees. And I just thought, man, if I died now, you know, what have I done for the last four years? And the answer is look at my fucking phone. I want to be off it. So I bought a little planner. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at my goals here. Now, what I, what I decided to do, because I haven't done this for a long time, I haven't written goals, is uh, a really good, because a lot of people, they struggle to know what they want. I'm very lucky where, where I'm, I'm just the type of autistic where I saw stand-up comedy when I was 12 and I was like, I want to do that for the rest of my life. And then I just fucking made it happen because I just, you know, connected with something and I'm like, that's, that's my whole life forever. Uh, and, uh, it's very difficult to make it work. And it's, I'm not saying that I'm, that I got lucky, you know, I, it's, it's striving every single fucking day. Um, but I am lucky to have encountered my dream in the real world because a lot of people, I feel like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And it's like, it's like, uh, the love of your life, like, uh, that everyone's love of their life is out there somewhere. And some people, they just never meet them. You know what? You know what I mean. They they just didn't meet him. It's like your soulmates. Your soulmates out there, but uh, you know she <laughs> she she was at, at at a cafe that you don't really go to. And if you did go to that other one, you would have bumped into each other and exchanged numbers. But unfortunately, you don't like coffee. You know what I mean? Um, but one thing is uh, that I did this year was I wrote down uh, before I even thought about my goals. I wrote down. And I stole this from a woman called Mel Robbins. I wrote down every single person that I'm inspired by. And I wrote down every single person that I'm jealous of or that I've ever felt jealousy towards. And a jealousy is something that's completely, pretty much completely left my life. Sometimes you do feel, feel those pangs. Um, but 
uh, I remember the last time I really, really, really felt jealous. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, a really hadn't happened for a long time and it really hit me hard. Um, but basically you write down everyone that you're inspired by and everyone you're jealous of, and you should notice a common theme of like, cause you know, uh, and I think jealousy is more telling because I can be really inspired by like a heavyweight Olympic champion, uh, Olympic lifter, right? Who fucking breaks the world record for the, the clean, the Olympic clean, right? But I'm not, I don't want to be able to lift that much weight, right? I don't care. I've never wanted to be that strong. Um, so like, what am I inspired by? I'm actually inspired by the effort that he put in and him getting his payoff. So what do I want that he has in my life and that is the uh, work ethic and the ability to strive and work that hard uh, and have a shot at achieving your goal. That's, do you know what I mean? Do you see where, I, where you can kind of see I'm inspired by this person? Do I want exactly what they've done? If the answer is yes, that's what you want to do. If the answer is no, why are you inspired by them? You know, there's people that are super inspiring. Like there's, um, there's, people who are incredibly disabled or incredibly disfigured from horrible accidents. They go on to become motivational speakers and they create a business out of it and they become this inspiring person. You don't want the injuries they've sustained or the conditions they were born with, but you do want their resilience because bad things happen to everyone. So you can look at them and go, man, if only I could be that strong, I would love to be that strong on the inside, you know, it's that, that's kind of the exercise. And the, the last, the last time I felt jealousy that, that I really felt it because for a really long time, every time I see success in just about anything, I, I would just be like, cool. Wow. That's like, it would make me feel happy. But the one uh, fairly recent time I felt very jealous was actually with my friend, uh, Ryan Long, the comedian. I started talking to Ryan I think in 2019, maybe just after I'd been in New York, he's a Canadian comedian. He immigrated to uh, America and he moved to New York and he started hustling there. And we started talking around the same time that I went to New York and we were around the same size then. And we were swapping info. We met on TikTok, maybe we were swapping info back and forth, trading knowledge. Uh, fast forward four years and the same day, the day before I'm about to go into my jaw surgery the same day, right? He does Joe Rogan. And I just felt this, this horrible pang of like jealousy, like, and, uh, and then it, and then, and I looked at it and I just felt awful, not because he didn't deserve it. He absolutely deserves it. He's one of my favorite comedians and he's a beautiful guy. Um, but I felt that because I just knew that that could have been me if I didn't get sick. And I really just, oh, and I felt that horrible feeling. And then I felt proud for my friend uh, and, I, and I messaged him. I said, that's so cool. And, and he's even bigger now and it's so fucking sick to see. But it was the same, it was the day before I was about to go into my surgery. I open up Instagram and I see he does Joe Rogan and I just... I just knew like that, that, you know, that would have been me if I had the opportunity to move when I said I was going to. Uh, and then if I didn't fall so sick, that could have been me. You know, it was just four years of uh, the, you know what it was? It really demonstrated the difference between working really hard for four years and, and not. And I wasn't able to, and that's not my fault. I don't fault myself for it. And, uh, and I, and, and it's amazing to see what, what Ryan Long has done. But in that moment, I just felt fuck. And I looked back on that when I was doing this writing exercise and what was I jealous of? I wasn't jealous that he got to do rogue and I wasn't jealous that he became successful. I was jealous that he had the opportunity to try. And I just, I just didn't cause I was ill. Um, and I had all these surgeries and, uh, and, and what's really, really, really cool is I now have the opportunity to try. I'm well, I'm healthy. Uh, thanks to you. 
I am not going to lose my house. I'm so fucking grateful. And that's not anything concrete. That's the opportunity to fail. That's what I have. I have the opportunity to fail and that's the same thing as the opportunity to succeed. The point is I have four years to try. And that's so fucking amazing. And if you're listening to this, you have that too. And if you're listening to this and you were like me and you were ill, you were sick and you don't have that four years because you got to go through your own pathway through hell, let me fucking tell you the other side is so worth the trouble and the pain and the sorrow and the despair and the the sustained hopelessness that you feel. It's worth it on the other side. I can fucking promise you that. And you know what? I didn't really believe it towards the end either. After so long, I just thought, you know what? This is, I fucked it. Four years of just doing my job poorly and being ill and dealing with all this shit. I fucked my shot. And you know what? I haven't fucking, you know, I've been watching all the time. Spanion, he did 13 years prison. He's come out. He's one of the biggest YouTubers within a few years in the country. He's killing it right now. It's so cool to see. And I think, fuck man, he did 13 years in fucking prison. I'll be all right. I did four years of being sick with an audience that loves me and cares about me and was waiting in the wings, waiting for me to get better. I'll be all right. And that's what I want out of this year and the next four is just the opportunity to try. And that's what I have in my fucking hands and I'm not going to let it go. Beautiful, man. I'm so grateful. And I would, and I wrote this today. I said, I would never choose to go through this voluntarily. If I, if I had, if you could send me back in time and I had the choice, I would say, no, thank you. That was horrible. But I'm on the other end of it now and I know that I am the most resilient version of myself that I could ever possibly become. What I have inside me, you can't learn. You'll never learn it. And I hope you never have to because the only way to learn it is to walk through hell for years like I have and like some of you have. And if you have, you know. If you have never, you don't know. And you, you will never understand. You might get close, but you won't. And that's good. And I'm very happy for you. <laughs> and I'm very happy for me. Uh, and, and that's what I get out of all of this. That's what I get out of this year, which is really four years for me, is resilience. You know, anything can happen to me and I'll be all right because I know what I have conquered. I walked through hell to get here and I'm here. And, uh, and, and I'm handsome as fuck at the end of it. <laughs> you know, people are treating me different at the shops. That's right. Oh yeah. Pretty privileged, bitch. Anyway, let's get into my goals. So, uh, I kind of did that exercise and I've been thinking about it for the last week and I've written down a few drafts about what I want. Firstly, here's how I figured out what I want. I wrote down where I want to be in five years and then I thought, where do I start? I broke that down. Here's where I start. And then I uh, segmented the goals into a few different categories. I've got career goals. I have fitness and health. I have financial goals. I have personal slash development goals, uh, creative and relationship goals. Relationship meaning my, my relationships, uh, but also my friends as well and family. So let's start off with the exciting one, Korea. Uh, by the end of the year, this podcast, Spearhead Sundays, is going to be banging 20,000 downloads an episode. 20,000 every episode. 20 fucking thousand. You're going to help me do that by sharing the clips, by telling your friends about the show, and I'm going to do that by do, achieving the second goal. This is a huge fucking massive call and I know I've said it before but I've said it while I was sick I've said it while I was ill and while I said it while I while I had no chin and I was much less resilient okay this year 2020 motherfucking four spearhead Sundays will be releasing 52 fucking episodes I'm not gonna miss a single episode not one not one I will not miss a single episode of this podcast. 
Guarantee it. Patreon 2. I'm going to fucking nail them all. All right? 52 podcast episodes. Fuck, we might even do more than that. We were play, playing with the idea of whenever we do a guest, I still do a solo. All right? I don't give a fuck. If I have to do an episode in an airport, I will. If I have to do an episode walking around the city outside because I can't record in my fucking hotel room, I will. I will not miss a single episode of Spearhead Sundays. And I know you don't believe me. And you know what? You're going to be on your knees begging for forgiveness. And I will forgive you because I wouldn't believe me either. Let's fucking go, baby. Not a single episode missed. Next, uh, I want to hit an average by the end of the year of 100,000 views uh, a YouTube video. I was there a few years ago. I will be there again. Right now, my channel's in the dumps because I've been doing it fucking terribly because I've been ill. That's all good. That's the way the world spins. I reckon it's going to take me three to six months to get it spinning up again. And I and I get it started every now and then. Every now and then a video hits 60. Every now and then a video hits 80. Every now and then a video hits fucking 10,000. Fuck! But that's all right because I'm going to get 100 uh, as an average by the end of the year. Not average over the whole year, but by the end of the year, if like the last three months of the year I'm hitting like 100,000, 150, 80,000 on videos, I'll give that one a tick. Uh, I'm also going to be releasing uh, 40 videos this year, main channel videos, short clips not included. That's going to be 40, all right? I also want to be smashing 20,000 views of vlog on the second channel, Lu2. Got big, big plans for the vlog, and I'm going to do at least 40 of those a year as well. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Uh, I also want to completely hand off editing. I don't want to edit anything unless I absolutely have to. Can I afford to do that right now? No, that's why it's a goal. <laughs> and that's why that's why uh, we're trying to make as much money as we can, baby. All right, that's why we're selling tickets. That's why we're going to do merch drops. That's why we're going to be pumping out the YouTube videos because we want money to, to build up the budget again, to be able to pay Keelan to do more than just sit here and laugh. You know, and we love that he's here and he, and we love that he sits here and laughs. He is here, by the way, for this whole episode. Uh, I, I decided to gag him because this episode's more about me. He's not here. Okay, you reckon I, I would get him here on fucking New Year's Eve? Yes, I would if I could, but he's busy. Um, yeah, so I want to do, uh, I want to hand off editing completely. I think I will always be editing um, stand-up clips. Uh, and then maybe my vlog, but I don't, I don't know. I just want to do as little of it as possible because I love writing and I love filming and I love performing and editing. I just don't have time to do it. I love editing. I really, really do enjoy it. And I will always edit the really important videos, like maybe once a month, but I, it's just not an effective use of my time for all of these other goals that I have. Um, I want to be ready to... Actually, I think I might have to keep that one a secret. I do have a couple secret goals that, yeah, that's a secret. Uh, I want to have a successful tour and a successful tour is uh, just one that's profitable. I don't want to, I don't need to make a million dollars. I just want to not lose money. Uh, and in, in many ways, I'm kind of starting again. We're doing small venues. We're doing limited runs. I want to build up that, that momentum. I want to get stand-up clips out. I want to have a su successful tour. And what that means is, it's uh, profitable, doesn't lose money, and people have a fucking great time. And I think the show is the best that it could be. Like I've done a really fucking hilarious, amazing show. And I think I've got that in my back pocket. I think you're going to love it. Loosebeers.com. Get your fucking tickets. Uh, and I want to do some UK shows. A couple of you fucking Brits are going to be happy about that. I want to do UK shows. I've been talking to a club over there. We'll see how we go. Um where else? What does that even say? Oh, I want the YouTube channel to be healthy. Healthy meaning I get a consistent number of views. So even if I'm not hitting 100,000 views every episode, as long as I'm hitting a consistent number, because right now it's fucking all over the place. Like a couple videos ago, I did 100. Then I did like 60. Uh, then I did 70 again. Then I did 20. Then I did 40. And then the most recent one, I did 5,000. Like that's not healthy. Whatever it is, I want it to be like... Con not only consistent, but consistently growing. So even if it's going up a thousand views or whatever a week, or even less than that, even if it's going up a hundred or whatever, as long as it's getting consistent views, whether it's 20,000, whether it's half a million, if it's consistent, I'll be stoked. Um, and I want to be performing stand up all, all year, uh, as well as, uh, 
releasing real talk all year between three and five real talks a year and then between three and five stand-up clips a year. Um, then more numbers. I want uh, 700 Patreon supporters. I want 150 Instagram, uh, 150,000 Instagram followers, 600K on TikTok and uh, 700K on YouTube. Those are my career goals. I think they're all... I think they're all possible if I have a phenomenal year, but I think that all of these goals, do you see where I'm going? Like if I hit half of them, it will have been a really good year. If I hit 80% of them, it will have been a crazy year. If I hit a hundred percent of them, I didn't aim high enough. You see what I'm saying? Fitness and health. Uh, I'm not going to go too in depth with these. I'll just reel these off. I want to weigh 90 kilos. I want to be swimming twice a week. I wrote down a goal in my notebook. I want to swim a hundred times this year. Uh, I want to be gymming three to five times a week, prioritizing eating fresh and non-processed food. I want to meal prep and cook as much as possible. I'm going to track my diet and my workouts. I want to take care of my new new teeth. I'm going to floss properly. I want to make sure I wear my retainer properly when the braces come out. I've never had nice teeth in my life before. I want to take care of them. Uh, I am not going to have any screens in the bedroom the whole year. If I take my phone down once, I failed the whole year, all right? I don't need a fucking alarm on my phone. I've got one on my Apple Watch. That's the only one that I'll allow because it can vibrate when I'm asleep and it wakes me up. All of the other alarms don't wake me up or they wake my girl up. I like getting up really early. She doesn't, so I've got the Apple Watch. That's the only screen I'm going to allow downstairs because you can't scroll on a fucking watch. If I take my phone to bed, it ruins my night and it ruins my morning, which ruins my day, which fucks my week. If I fuck my week, I fucked a month. If I fucked a month, I fucked a year. I, I, uh, you know, it's about choices. And I'm not gonna. I'm gonna choose not to take my fucking phone downstairs because I don't need to answer your text at 11 p.m. And I certainly don't need to watch your twerking video at midnight. I'll watch that at about 1 p.m. on my lunch break. Thank you very much. Nice ass. Anyway, uh, and I'm gonna keep up my skincare because it's really working, uh, and I want to do that. Next, we've got my financial goals. I want to escape debt. I'm not going to lie. I'm in a fuckload of debt, all right? And uh, it was debt that I had to pull out because, you know, medical bills and all that kind of stuff, but I want to escape it. I want to make serious progress into knocking that down. Uh, and I think that I can. I think that I can make a fuckload of money next year. I've made a fuckload of money in the past, even when I'm sick, even when I'm ill. I haven't been a healthy version of myself for four years and I've still done all of this shit. I've still bought a house before I was 30. I've done all this amazing stuff. Now I can be like, all right, let's, it's fucking, it's game time. I want to get rid of these people who are fucking calling my phone. Uh, I also, this is something that I think that you guys could probably do. And I think that we all could do. I'm going to try really hard to just not buy anything that I don't need. Right. And I'm, and I mean like need, like my life would be like fucked if I didn't have it. For example, a camera, if I didn't have a camera, my life would be fucked. But right now I have a camera, so I don't need one. You know, it would be cool to have another camera, a camera for Keelan, right? A camera for a better camera to film stand up. I certainly could use one of those. I don't need it. Right. And work tools are a little bit different because the business is kind of a separate entity to me. But a better example is like um, shoes. I don't need shoes, all right? I think a pair of shoes that I do need are some runners because the dog chewed up some runners. So I'll replace those with the runners that I used to have. But I wouldn't buy two pairs because I want different colors. You see what I mean? I really want a pair of boots I don't need them. So unless I have like a really important gig or something that will be filmed or, you know, like an event that I need to attend there where I need to wear like really nice shoes, I'm not going to buy them. I don't need it. You know, uh, uh, my phone, right? My phone camera is uh, compared to the newest iPhone. It's not as good. I don't need the camera. I'm, I'm really, really, really going to try to only buy things that I need. Uh, and really the only things that I, that I need to buy is uh, books, right? Because they enrich my life so much, but they're so cheap. Uh, 
And the, with the book thing, I'm not going to buy a new one until I've read one I already have. You see what I mean? Like, it's like even with, with leisurely things where you don't strictly need them, like to survive, it's like, well, do I, if I want to buy a book, do I need to buy a new one? Or do I have a bunch on my fucking shelf that I haven't read? It's just like, I want to buy as few things as possible. And I think you need to do that as well. Um, support me on Patreon, loosebiz.com slash Patreon. That's not buying, that's uh, signing up to a subscription. Um, I want to keep the tour money without spending a dollar of it. This will be difficult because I'm not making much money online. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to get all the ticket money that I get and I want to put it in a separate account and I don't want to touch it until after it's done so that I have this bulk amount that I can then decide what I want to do with rather than say, you know, I as I do a show – I get paid out and then I take that money and then I start to spend it on my life. I would love to try to exist solely on online income because it will motivate me a lot to do YouTube properly, to do Patreon, the podcast, all that kind of stuff uh, properly. Like I, re I really love, I, th I think I might, I might have the wrong person, but I think it's Jay Leno. I think he had the, the tonight show talk show in America and he didn't spend a dollar of it so that he was forced to continue doing stand-up because he very well could have been like, oh, well, I don't need to tour anymore because I'm making millions of dollars here. So I'm just going to slack off there. Instead, he was like, I'm going to take all of this money from this show that I do. That's like a guaranteed win because I'm really good and everyone really likes me and I have an amazing team around me. So I'm just going to take this money and I'm going to put it in an account and use it as savings or an investment or whatever he did with it. The point was he didn't spend it. And then that forced him to strive elsewhere. And that's what I want to try and do is like, I'm going to get this ticket money and I'm going to put it away and I'm going to try not to spend it uh, at all on anything so that I'm like, fuck, I'm running a bit low on money. I need to start doing more videos. I need to put more effort into my YouTube and that will obviously sell more tickets. So you see what I mean? Um, rather than being like, oh, well, I'm making some money on touring and some money on YouTube so I can do both of them half-assed. It's like, no, I'm not allowed to touch that money because this this whole online business needs to be done fucking properly. And if I can't do this properly, I don't deserve that. Um, I want to buy a car. I'm sick of having no license uh, and, you know... <laughs> Pre-2019, that was completely my fault. After 2019, it was lockdowns and sickness, but I have no excuse now. I want a car. I don't want a fancy car. I want to spend six or seven grand on a car with a really big space so I can put suitcases in it and take merch and tour. That's what I want to do. Uh, whatever will work. I want to get my license. I think I can get it by the end of uh, May is my goal. I've got my driving instructor that I used to drive with in when in between lockdowns. I'm going to text him if he's still working. I'm going to go, mate, I want my license by the end of fucking April. How do we do this? And I'm just going to do it every week, no matter what. I'm getting my fucking license. I'm over it. I want to be able to drive to the pool. You know, I was looking at buying a bike so I can fucking ride to the pool because it's a 50 minute walk, but about a seven minute bike ride. Pathetic. All right, get your fucking license. I turned 30 in January and I'll, and I'll be turning 30 on my L's. All right, it's, sorry, scratch that. My L's have expired. All right, so I'll be, I'll be turning 30 going into the fucking, can I please renew my learner's permit? Like, kill yourself. <laughs> you know, he, he, the, the, if the surgeons listen to my podcast, he's going to be like, this is the guy's life who I saved? Fucking, what a waste. <laughs> Um, I don't want to miss a single mortgage payment. I'm back on track. Well, not back on. I'm look there. <laughs> I'm not allowed to miss another payment. Let's just say that. Thank you very much for your help. It's not an emergency anymore, but you know, it's also not good. Um, and, uh, a couple of, uh, boring ones that have nothing to do with you. Um, 
personal and development goals. This is just like, this is just stuff that has nothing to do with my career, has nothing to do with my money, just has to do with like uh, building a life that I want to live. Like obviously, and, and like, obviously I would be super stoked if I was selling out Madison Square Garden in New York in, in a year. But if I hated my life all around that, that would be horrible and not worth it. So this is just about like, okay, outside of everything else, how do I build a life that I'm stoked to fucking wake up into? Uh, not that I hate my life. It's just like, it's something, it's like a garden, man. You have a beautiful garden. If you don't maintain it, it'll go to shit. Um, so I'm, I've uh, planted my seeds. They're really sprouting and I'm, I've got some good growth and I really want to cultivate a beautiful, luscious garden for me to wander around and be present in. And that is my life. I want to read 30 books. It's a lot of books. I think I read 12 or, 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 or 15 this year. Um, I want to read 30 uh, in 2024. And that's pretty, you know, it's not easy, but it's, it's really like an hour of reading a day. I'll smash that easy. Uh, I want to be doing weekly artist dates. That's a date with myself by myself where I do something. It's where I get my best material. It's always where I get my best ideas. It's always where I think of something. I did this yesterday. I have a bunch of stuff to say in the next podcast. I always get something out of, out of, leaving the house and doing an activity by myself. Even if I fucking hated it, I come home with a hilarious story or, 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 or an idea of what I don't like doing, which is useful to, to make my life better because now I can go, oh, I fucking hated that. I'm going to avoid it. How do you know what food you like if you don't taste anything? You know what I mean? So I want to do that once a week. Uh, I'm going to limit the phone use as much as possible. I've gotten my screen time on the phone down from it was about eight to 10 hours every single day when I was ill. Now it's, uh, I think uh, my last week's average was five and a half, which is really good for me, especially because a lot of that was posting. Like I do unfortunately have to use the phone to post shit. And I do have to do a little bit of scrolling just to kind of keep up with the world and see what's trending and all that shit. Um, but I wanna, I would love to get that down to like four hours or even less, like how much time, it's like an experiment, like how much, how little time can I spend on the phone and still be connected with the world enough to make jokes about what's happening? I would imagine it's much less than what I am actually putting in. Uh, and I think, yeah, I want just limit as, as much as possible because I hate using it and I never, I never am like, oh, I'm glad I did that. It sucks. I'm going to learn to drive. I'm going to get my license. All right. Now that might, that might sound even more unrealistic than never missing a podcast episode. Scratch that. The driver's license is much more likely because <laughs> I have almost gotten my license before. I have never even come close to never missing an episode before. Um, I'm going to practice boundaries with people and with everything and even with work. Like I'm not going to work myself to death. If I feel like shit, if I've run out of ideas, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to swim. I'm going to go for a walk and then I'm going to come back to it. And that's a boundary. If, uh, if I have people who are fucking in my life that are talking shit, I'm not going to allow them to be in my life. That's a boundary. If, uh, if, if someone in you know, I'm working with is constantly disrespectful. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, maybe I'll just try harder. I'll be like, look, this person's constantly disrespectful. I'm going to lean back from them. You know, it's, it's boundaries. I'm going to practice that shit. Um, prioritizing myself is a goal as well. Um, I want to, oh, that makes, that makes me really sad. That's just for me. Um, I want to do a charity thing for someone. Um, I want to plan every single day. I want to plan every day. Sorry, I just got... <laughs> it's not... Uh, it can't be spoken about yet. I want to plan every day. Um, I, want to, I want to... Every single morning, I'm going to look at my... This is why I bought this. I'm going to look at my daily planner and I'm going to go, what do I need to do today? If nothing is written there, I'm going to write it down. If something is written there, I'm going to fucking execute it. If it's impossible, I'm going to edit it. I'm going to move things around. I'm going to delay things, put this there, change priorities, whatever it is I have to do. I want to know what the fuck I'm doing every single day because I, um, especially when I was ill, my memory, my short-term memory and my focus was atrocious. Now, uh, like it was so bad that it wasn't even worth trying. Now I can't believe how well my brain works. I can't believe how alert 
how, 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 how I am, how alert I am, how many things I can remember, how much easier it is to say something and then do it, how much uh, just more alert, aware and present my brain is. Uh, and I've realized that I've never, I've never been like this. My brain has never been, even when I wasn't really, really sick, uh, it was something that gradually, slowly got worse. My mum used to call me Captain Vega out when I was a teenager because I would always lose shit and forget stuff. And some of that is just naturally who I am. I think a lot of it was illness and it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And now I am here on the other side of it. My brain fucking works. I mean, clearly, I told you guys I was going to talk for 20 minutes. We're now at minute 51. <laughs> at least by my count, it's like, yeah, almost minute 50, right? Uh, and I want to practice. I want to I want to hone this a new ability that I have to remember things and I want to have a routine and a schedule and I want to stick to it like a fucking, uh, like a machine, you know? I want to, I've, I've spent four years uh, intentionally avoiding a schedule because I was so ill that every morning I would have to wake up and ask my body, what can I do? You know, because if I wrote something down, I need to do this, 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 and this, I would wake up and I would be too sick to do it. And then I would feel awful and guilty and lazy, even though I was just sick. Um, so I started just, I let go of that need to control and I just, was like, okay, I would wake up every morning and I would ask my body, like, what can we do today? And sometimes it was sit in bed. Many times it was sit in bed until 2 p.m. and 3 p.m., wake up, have some food, you know, write a tweet and go to bed. <laughs> sometimes it was that. Sometimes it was get up in the morning, go to the cafe, walk the dog, write my pages, film a video, and that'd be it for the week. You know, it was like, it was up to how, however I felt that day and it was so unpredictable uh, and inconsistent but now man amazing um it's just yeah so now i have this ability to kind of plan and execute because before i could plan i couldn't execute now i do so i'm like all right i want to really see what happens if i can do that for a year because that'll change your life man if you make choices every fucking day instead of just drifting, like, dude, I can tell you four years of just drifting and doing whatever, you know, it's like, if you're ill, sometimes that's what you have to do. And that is the healthy thing to do, but it has the same effect on your life as like a lazy person deciding to do fuck all, you know, there's no material difference. Like you get a lot more sympathy and <laughs> no one calls you lazy, but the effect on your life is the same. Your momentum leaves and your potential diminishes and all that kind of stuff. So I've had four years of, of like doing what, whatever I can or whatever I feel like doing. Now I have the ability to be like, nah, this is the plan. Let's fucking execute. I want to see what happens if I do that for a year. We're almost done. Um, I uh, regularly check in on your well being. Uh, keep your house and your spaces clean. Uh, and then, what do we have here? Uh, creative goals. This is not necessarily my career, just anything creative. I want to write the best hour of my life uh, to tour in 2025. So right now I'm touring the show that I did, uh, that I was only able to perform in Melbourne. It's a fucking brilliant, beautiful, hilarious show that I'm super proud of. But it means uh, that I everything that I write now is going to go into a bucket for next year, which is really rare uh, for comedians in Australia. Usually, you've got about you know four to six, maybe eight months to write an hour. I've got over a year, right? If I start now in January, I probably won't start touring until March or even April twenty five. That's almost eighteen months of uh, writing. So that's a really really good opportunity to write just the best show of my life. And that's what I'm going to do next year. Um, I want to keep up my pages writing every morning. I want to make something every day. I want to get back into Warhammer, painting, building, reading, playing. Uh, I haven't done it for ages again, because my brain didn't work. I want to do that. I need a hobby that's not screens so that when I finish work or when I become overwhelmed or if I've done all that I can, 
that day I have something to turn off the computer and and come to that isn't reading because sometimes after editing or writing for so long, you know, your eyes are like, oh, fuck, I don't have, I would love to just paint something, something tactile, something I can do. So Warhammer. Um, I'm going to set up and maintain a hobby table in my other room. I want to cook my way through my cookbook. Uh, I want to try one new recipe a month minimum. And uh, this is a big one for me. I'm going to live. It says live your life as a comedian. I want to be performing. I want to be writing. I want to be going to shows. I want to be gigging. I want to be a comedian. I haven't been a comedian for so fucking long. I've just been a sick one. Um, and I want to release, it says release your best work. That goes for everything I'm doing. Videos, podcasts, shorts, stand-up clips, real talk, on the stage, fucking even what, what I paint. I would love to paint the best miniature I've ever painted. And finally, relationships. This is friends, family, relationships. Uh, take her on dates, romance her, spend time uh, intentionally with her. Um, take your dog everywhere. Drive so that you can take her every, everywhere and for God's sake, have fun. And that's those are my goals. And they sound like a lot of goals, but if you really look at it, a lot of it is just like maintaining a lifestyle that I want to live. A lot of only, on, really only the, the career ones are like concrete, like this is what I want to hit. Everything else is like, this is what I would like to maintain, you know, like fitness is a good, is a good example. Like I just want to swim twice a week. I don't want to become an Olympic champion. I don't want to hit a specific time. I don't want to, you know, look a certain way. I just want to do it twice a week with gym. I don't want to be benching this. I don't want to be deadlifting that. I just want to be going three to five times a week. And when I go, I put in a really good effort. You know, that's like, it's about maintaining. It's not necessarily about becoming a, an Olympic level swimmer while also becoming a, an IFBB bodybuilding pro, you know? So those, those are my goals for 2024. I'm most excited about um, the podcast and the tour. I really love this podcast so much and I am so grateful for people who listen to this, especially after what you have recently done for me by doing the annual membership on Patreon. I cannot express how grateful I am to that. You have literally saved my home. The reason why I'm in this red chair and not in a fucking room in my parents' place is because of you who chipped in to sign up to the annual Patreon, you who is about to, you who is intending to do so, uh, you who already has done it. Thank you so much and thank you. And I really do hope Honestly, I really hope that you take something from this and I hope that you set your own goals and I hope that you try to live this year intentionally. I don't know about you, but so many people in my life and so many strangers on social media and everything, so many people seem to have had a really shit few years recently. Um, but on the flip side, so many people also seem to have been doing the work through that awful time and are coming out feeling hopeful. And I haven't felt hopeful for years. Like literally, I've not. Or the only thing that I've had is like this, this idea that I'll feel better when the surgeries are over. That's all that really kept me going. Like I had I didn't have many hopes for my career. I didn't have any at least oh, at least I get to, you know, I'll get to tour when it's done. I didn't have any anything. I didn't be like, oh, well, when it's all over, I'll be able to do this. Or I got I got to a point where the only thing I had in my head was I'll feel better when the surgeries are over. Uh, and I, and at some point towards the end there, it just became like a habit more than a belief of like, well, I'm doing this because I always have been doing this. Um, but I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it's fucking worth it every second of the struggle and a lot of people like to say oh this made me who i am and i wouldn't want it any other way fuck no i if i had the choice i would go no way because i still have a lot of shit to work through from that and it was not a fun experience and it took four years of my life away you know but i can see the amazing beautiful thing that i've gotten from it and that is just an, a 
abundance of resilience, mental toughness, a depth to my soul that I could only have ever uh, achieved through heartbreak and pain and despair and sorrow. And so if you're going through that right now and it looks like there's no end in sight, I love you and there is. And you will be okay. And it might take years. It might take even longer than four years. But you will be on the other side of this one day and you will look back and you you probably may never be grateful for it. Maybe one day I will be. Right now I'm not like, oh, thanks so much. I'm a little bit like that was a horrible ride, but it did make me ripped. It did make me strong. But one day you will look back on the tunnel through hell in which you walked and you will think, I fucking did that shit and it made me strong. Stronger than anyone you know. I know that for a for a fact, I'm stronger than anyone I know. I have something in me that can never be learned, can never be attained, can never be figured out. It can only ever be attained through experiencing sustained despair. Um, and yeah, that has made me so fucking powerful. So if you're in the middle of it, you just wait till you're on the other side and you feel what's going on in your body and your mind and your soul and your spirit. And if I can recommend one thing, if you're in the middle of it, write, write every day, write what you're feeling, write what you're experiencing, write everything down every single morning, write three pages. That's what I do. Look at this. I've, I've filled these up. This is my illness. I filled these. You want to know what I went through? I can tell you exactly because every single day I wrote three pages in these moleskin notebooks and it's all there. And the reason why it's not in my head and in my soul and all this darkness and all this shit is because I got it out of my body and I put it in here. That's fucking powerful and now that i'm healthy i still do this habit and you should see how beautiful the book i just filled out is i'm cracking open another one 2024 january 1 just coincidence serendipity i finished one notebook that started before my surgery and has and ended on the final day of 2023 didn't plan it I don't know how many pages these have. I write three every day. Some I miss a couple days a month uh, and it just worked out. And 2024 is going to be beautiful for me, beautiful for you, and we're, we're all going to make it, brah. I think 24 is going to be a very special year. It's one of the first years in a long time that starts on a Monday. Not only is it the first day of the year, it's the first day of the week. It's a rebirth, man, and it's special. And I think that you should choose to embrace that because these New Year's resolutions, man, these setting your intentions for an entire year, it's so powerful if you let it be because it's all in here and it's in your mind and in your spirit and you can do it and I believe in you. You know, it's such a momentous occasion. Tonight at the exact same time, a year finishes and starts in the same instant. It's a rebirth, brother. 2024 is going to be fucking huge. I'll check in with you in a year, or in other words, I'll talk to you again about this in 52 motherfucking episodes because I'm not missing a single one. All right, that's me. Have a great year. I believe in you. Write your intentions. Write your goals. You have weeks to figure it out, think about what you want, but write it down and do it every day. Get yourself a daily planner. You don't have to get a fancy one like me, all right? You can get them for fucking two bucks. Do it. I reckon it might even change your life, all right? That's it. See you later. The next episode will be funny. And after that, there'll be 51 more next year. All right, have a shit one. Bye.